morning. Our paper wants to illustrate an experimental case of a three-dimensional survey carried out as a tool to record a stratigraphically excavated sequence. The test case chosen is Bizarcho, a medieval and post-medieval site in the north-central Sardinia. It is a very meaningful place with high strategic importance for the medieval history of the island, as since the 80s of the 11th century it was the diocesan seat and was a village which was inhabited until the first half of the 18th century. The cathedral and the bishop citadel ruins are nowadays part of a cultural touristic route. The archaeological excavation was carried out by the, the, by the med medieval archaeology chair of the University of Sassari. Um, it was a precious educational opportunity in which university students could under understand and learn the basic principle of a new way for our community of survey and managing excavation data. Digging operations took place in different trenches of the site, the village, oh, sorry, the village that is here, uh, um, sorry, the village, the, um, the uh, bishop citadel, uh, and the, the bishop citadel and the village cemetery. Uh, the cemetery area was chosen as the ideal case study. It needs a high precision survey and it's not easy to transform it into a tur tourist visitable site, especially in situ. Tom tombs in Bizarcho Cemetery are characterized by simple ground trench and there aren't any brick structures or headstones to mark their presence. Furthermore, the cemetery area was also used before the medieval period. Uh, therefore, it was uh, mandatory recording and removing them to understand and analyze earlier context. 3D survey was carried out side by side with the traditional topographic survey in order to have a comparison between the two methods at the end of the excavation process. We were interested in evaluating them in terms of professional skills and human resources involved, execution time, reliability precision, and exploitability uh, of the results. The main goal was the definition, the definition of an operating protocol to apply to the various documentation steps, collecting and achieving data, analysis, interpretation. By applying a precise working protocol, we also hoped to obtain ready to disseminate results. The methodology used to reach our goals is characterized by three main steps that are first data acquisition, then data processing, and at least contents managing, online publishing, and exploiting the results. Survey activities followed a precise working pipeline designed and planned before starting the digging. Image acquisition is a fundamental stage in the acquisition process. The quality and scientific value of the photogrammetric survey depends on this step. The survey pipeline was defined according to the characteristic of the archaeological context to be documented. Sorry. All the stratigraphic layers dug were documented in the same way without any selection of the stratigraphic sequence. That are first automatic coded markers were positioned on the context surface, at least four for every layer acquired. Then Sketches on, and technical drawings were made in order to graphically represent context boundaries and extension, and also marker location. The photographic acquisition of each layer was tailored to the specific features and characteristic of the layer to be recorded, and according to the standard acquisition procedures established at the beginning, that are constant lighting conditions, sharp focusing on the photos, regular coverage of the layers, and no use of flash. The topographic survey of the photogrammetric targets was carried out through Total Station, a Leica TS-02 model, useful for scaling the models and for setting up the coordinate system, in the specific case Gauss-Boaga Roma 40. As you can see, no, sorry, here, um, uh, 33 photographic sets were acquired during excavation to, go to document 100 con contexts. On the whole, uh, 2,183 images were captured, with an average of 66 photos for each set. 
all the images were acquired using a Canon uh, PowerShot uh, SX50 with a 12.1 megapixels resolution. <coughs> Data processing was carried out as a standard multi-step process necessary to build textured 3D models using the Agisoft PhotoScan software. The steps of the process are aligning photos, building sparse point cloud, building dense point cloud, building mesh, generating texture, building ortho mosaic, and exporting results. As for the targets, 228 of them were used and measured. The 3D models were set into georeferenced coordinates thanks to the markers topographically surveyed. Markers were also useful to scale the model and as true matches to improve photo alignment procedures. Through markers, photo alignment optimization, measuring distances and volumes within the scene were possible. Marker positions were defined by their projection on the source photos. The more photos are used to specify marker position, the higher is the accuracy of marker placement. To define marker location within a scene, every, markers was, every marker was visible in at least two photos. 33 texture and georeference high resolution models were built, and the model size uh, goes from uh, 500,000 to 1.8 mil million triangles. In the third methodology step, that is contents managing, online publishing and exploiting the results, um, we, um, um, the third methodology step uh, applied to reach our goal was characterized by the use of the uh, 3D Heritage Online Presenter, a software framework for the creation of online presentation and interactive vi visualization of high resolution 3D contents. It was chosen as a valid tool for sharing high resolution models and information on the web, especially in the cultural heritage field. It was chosen as a valid tool for sharing high-resolution models and information on the web, especially in the cultural heritage field. 3D Hope is written in JavaScript language and is based on the WebGL subset of HTML5, implementing plugin-free 3D rendering on most of the web browsers. It, was, it is a very flexible and adaptable tool that can be customized and tailored to every archaeologist's requirement. It allows to view and manage contents with different levels of details and to develop a deep interconnection among different kinds of data. Thanks to 3D Hope, it is possible to go beyond the typical archaeological activities of documentation, restoration support, study and measurement. 3D models became valuable means of dissemination, teaching and presentation to the public of archaeological contexts. Another important reason have pushed us to use 3 do the possibility to learn it gradually, even with low level in programming skills. Thanks to the provided how-to tutorial and the great willingness of the developers ready to help us and to solve our problems in every moment. This way, the, three, uh, the 33 high resolution models were set to deal with the framework. They were exported in PLY format and then converted into Nexus multi-resolution format. Nexus is a multi-resolution visualization library supporting an efficient interactive rendering of very large 3D models and online streaming capabilities. All the 3D data have been organized in small chunks which are used according to the user point of view and transmitted on the network only when needed. The result is a fast interaction with the 3D models and an efficient use of the network. To build a useful tool which could be suitable to, the archaeolo to archaeological usage, the 3D Hub is Arch of Visualization was designed following the idea of a timeline. Through the timeline panel, it is possible to visualize and navigate the different archaeological periods defined in the digging process that are here in the bottom left. It is possible go, going from the earlier to the later ones. For instance, you can look at the late medieval cemetery phase and explore the cemetery context before they were dug, or after removing the fields when the skeletons are highlighted, 
or if you prefer, you can have a look at all the grave trenches after removing the burials. Another interesting possibility is to manage a single evidence, such as a single burial, like thumb number 13, that is here displayed. Uh, this belongs to the late medieval period, and you can see separately the field, the skeleton, and the empty trench. For each context, it is possible to access, through the documentation box, all the related recording documentation. For instance, for the context uh, number 5212 belonging to thumb 13, the, fo the following contents are available. Context sheet and skeleton sheet, both in th uh, 3D PDF format, which include uh, a lower resolution 3D model of the skeleton, traditional plant in which the context is drawn, and photographic records. On the left side, uh, um, the tool panel offers a wide range of useful instruments, hotspot, to, to show specific finds in the burial, the measure tool to take measurements on the 3D surface, and the peak point coordinate tool to get the georeference coordinates of a specific point. A useful 3D hop tool is also the plane section tool that lets the user slice the different levels of the stratigraphic sequence with cut through planes. And finally, the compass button here on the right side can be used to set the orientation to the north. We have just seen some of the features in the interactive viewer that have been designed and developed especially for a technical use for archaeologists. However, we strongly believe that the framework here presented can also be used for dissemination and valorization purposes. purposes. With a different interface setup, the main feature of the stratigraphically excavated sequence can be easily illustrated. By clicking the hotspot, you can see in pop-up windows uh, basic and didactic descriptions with clarifying images that guide non-experts through the archaeological site navigation. Now we can have a look at the results of comparing the two survey methods used during the excavation campaign. Traditional two-dimensional <coughs> survey is characterized by point selection. You choose relevant points that allow you to draw the main features of the context to be recorded. And this determines, determines no high precision. Long-time survey and long-time drawing are required. And you obtain not immediately comprehensible products that uh, usually are reserved to, to experts. On the contrary, three-dimensional survey makes no, makes no selection. Every detail appears in the model according to the detail level of the survey. <coughs> Very high precision survey is achieved. Survey time and survey process and processing time depend on the quality of the object to be recorded. Survey products are ready to use models. In a few time, they can easily be used also for disseminating and spreading knowledge by being published. Photogrammetric survey allows to obtain other kinds of spendable data, orthomosaic, for instance, that in this case have been used to draw plans, section, and prospects to produce the two-dimensional standard graphic documentation. You can export the model in several formats according to the different needs, such as Collada, uh, useful to share uh, the models on Google Earth. In conclusion, we can say that in our opinion, three-dimensional photogrammetric survey can effectively integrate and enrich the two-dimensional survey. 3D modeling, which allows a very accurate and complete recording of the archaeological context, has been useful both in the documentation and analysis stage, and also in the interpretation and dissemination one. Even if, in particular cases, it could require the same time of traditional survey, both in recording and in data processing phase, it guarantees higher precision and ready-to-disseminate results, mainly in a cemetery context. 3D Hope can be considered a suitable tool to visualize and web-publish high-resolution 3D models, to connect them to the large amount of data. 
collected and interpreted during and after the excavation process. This tool provides an added value to the cemetery context presented, for which it is difficult to imagine and define a musealization. Thanks to the 3D models and the use of 3D hope, it has been possible to reuse the survey data to create an interactive web-based presentation aimed to the public to provide a viable way to present and disseminate the result of the excavation to non-experts. <laughs>